DJ Israel Records. I like it. When I look where I come from, oh, all I see is His glory. When I see where I'm going, God is changing my story. It took me from Bulawayo, from a small township back up for Mula. Now I'm going on a world tour. Hey. What it can do for me? tonight in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever you are joining in from I welcome you all in Jesus mighty name all those who are tuning in via Facebook I welcome you and all those who are also joining in via Facebook uh, via uh, YouTube uh, I welcome you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ may the Lord be with you and may the Lord touch you from wherever you are joining in from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're joining in via Facebook, kindly share the broadcast. If you are tuning in via our Facebook platform, share the broadcast. Invite a friend, take a friend, take a brother, and let them know that we are live in the name of Jesus. I'm so excited 
and I'm so, so happy for what God is about to do tonight. For I know that wherever you are watching from, definitely God is going to do a new thing in your life. And your life will never be the same again after tonight. We are moving on and we are pressing on with the Back to Christ movement. We are declaring to all the African continents, we are declaring, uh, uh, sorry, to the African continent, and we are declaring even to America, to Asia, and the whole world at large. And we are saying it is time for us to go back to Christ. It is time for us to go back to our first love. It's time to go back to our knees. It's time to go back to the secret place. For the Bible says in the book of Psalms 91 that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I shall say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him I will live, I will be, I will be found. So if you're tuning in via Facebook, share the broadcast. And if you're also tuning in via YouTube platform, uh, Follow, subscribe to our YouTube channel in the name of Jesus Christ. It's good to see everybody who's joining in. I see um, Zimbabwe is online. Zimbabwe is online. I see New Zealand is online. Mosina is online. There, there, there is a song in my spirit. Be, be, before I come to you, there's a song in my spirit. This song reminds me very much of uh, Zimbabwe. I don't know if I've got any Zimbabweans who are watching tonight. I don't ever got any Zimbabweans who are tuning in tonight. Just touch the keyboard for me a little bit. Touch it, touch it, touch it. Touch it, touch it, touch it. Yeah. Touch it for me, touch it. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Makana kache so Makana kache so Jesus, si muda ruoko, ruoko uchiti, ma kanaka Jesus. Yeah, imi ma kanaka Jesus. Ma kanaka Jesus. There's a part that blesses me so much, and I just want to talk to somebody tonight. It says, Uno che machema. Iwe u no Jesus, da 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 da. Unoche, 
awesome God and he is a great God if you are just joining us from wherever you are joining in from kindly share the broadcast if you are joining in via Facebook share the broadcast tell a friend to tell a friend and tell another friend again to tell another friend that we are live 
And God is about to do what only He can do. You ready? Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Share the broadcast so that we may reach out to as many people as possible. Kindly share the broadcast. If you're just joining us, share the broadcast. If you're just uh, arriving on the broadcast right now, share. If you're watching via YouTube, kindly tell a friend, invite your family, invite your sister. Tonight, I'm talking about prophets for sale. This is a broadcast you don't want, you don't want to miss for anything. Prophets for sale. Prophets for sale. Oh my God. There's a song in my spirit. There's a, there's a song in my spirit. Is it ready? Dino kure kerera. Dino kure kerera. Saka to kerera. Yeah. 
It's, it's, it's going to be a beautiful night and I, I just feel it in my spirit that tonight we, we're going to have it. I, I, I just feel it. <laughs> that tonight's going to be a good night. Oh, touch it, touch it, touch it. Yeah. Touch it. Touch. One more time, one more time, one more time. Uh. 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 Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
favorite songs. Oh, Jesus. Oh, as we're getting ready for the word, if you can understand this language, this song will minister to you. Take a look, take a look. Just give me a key and take it easy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. If, 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 if you understand these words, oh, Jesus. This is a song that was sang by a guy called Kenan. Kenan Nyati. Kenan Nyati. Let's go in together. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus. This song ministers to me. It's the evil ghost.
It's time for revival. It's time for. Mm. You ready?
It's, it's, it's hot in here. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. It's hot in here. Yeah. It's hot in here. You ready? Ugo Binko, see, no more young dwelling. Baben came up, don't have you. Ay, 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 what's up with, what's up with, what's up with? Ivan Benjalo, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Ugo Binko, see, no more young dwelling. Jesus. Are you still there? Just one last song. Then we're out of here. Just one last one. Just so we not swell like Calvary. Kalima kala di bitaruma. Iyo yo Calvary. Iyo yo Calvary. Just so we not swell like Calvary. Calibacalabi, <laughs> 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 
Take out the Bible. Let us get down to business. Somebody quickly type in the comment section and say, Prophets for sale. Quickly type there and say, Prophets for sale. Prophets for sale. Quickly type and say, Prophets for sale. Prophets for sale. Yes, Lord. Prophets for sale. Touch your neighbor, say, Prophets for sale. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Are you ready for me with the scripture? Prophets for for sale. That is the title of our message tonight, Prophets for Sale. And I want you to know that we are leaving no stone unturned. That is the motto. That is our motto for this year. We are leaving no stone unturned. We are leaving no stone unturned. We are leaving no stone unturned. It's good to see everybody who's joining in, all those who are joining in from... Um, from the UK, UK is online. Uh, United States of America is online. Virginia is online. Just uh, quickly type and let me know where you're joining in from as we are getting down to tonight's business in the name of Jesus. Quickly type in the comment section and say, Prophets for sale. Say, Prophets for sale. Prophets for sale. If you're joining us via Facebook, kindly share the broadcast, share the broadcast so that we may reach out to as many people as possible. I'm going to try by all means to be as calm and collected as possible tonight so that I may be able to articulate and deliver the message that I have to deliver tonight without any interference from uh, anything. I'll try by all means to take it slow. As you all know, that uh, every live broadcast that we have, we always start with praise and worship. If it's not worship, we start with praise. So I always make sure that before I minister, personally, I love to worship. Personally, I love to praise God. So it always makes perfect sense for me to worship and praise him first it doesn't just make sense to me but it it um provokes something in my spirit and I, I i just feel so blessed whenever i worship him for the bible says he is looking for those who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth i believe god is raising worshipers in our time who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth kindly share the broadcast share the broadcast if you're tuning in via facebook share the broadcast and if you're tuning in via Facebook, a, 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 a look on your screen, you're going to realize that there is a follow icon. There is a follow icon that you're going to see on your screen. Kindly click uh, that follow icon so that uh, each time I am live, you may be getting some notifications in the mighty name of Jesus. I see Namibia is also online. Zimbabwe is also online. Zimbabwe, my beloved country, country that I love so much um, is also online. By the way, I'm from Zimbabwe. I don't just love Zimbabwe, but I am from Zimbabwe. I was born and bred in Zimbabwe, grew up in a place called Bulawayo. Um, yeah, and God called me into ministry at a very young age. From the age of 13, 14, I was already preaching the gospel. I was already uh, moving around and preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God that today, as I'm sitting here right now, um, the grace of God has carried me through. If it was not because of the grace of God, I would not have been where I am today. And I really thank God for everything. I really praise him for the journey that I took for me to be where I am today in the name of Jesus Christ. Kindly drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know where you're watching from as we are getting down to the business of the day. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where you're tuning in from. 
uh, in the name of Jesus. As you all know, that each and every service that we have, I always uh, try by all means to um, articulate whatever message that the Lord will have dropped in my spirit for that particular day in a way that will be understood by everybody who's tuning in. So uh, may the Lord bless you as you're tuning in and may the Lord touch you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The title of my message is Prophets for Sale. We are selling some prophets tonight and by the special grace of God, we are going to put them on auction. <laughs> we are going to put them on auction and whoever is going to be the lowest bidder will go away with uh, at least five or more. I'm not talking about the highest bidder, but I'm talking about the lowest bidder. Whoever is going to be the lowest bidder will walk away with a prophet. <laughs> anyway, that was a joke. That was a joke. Let us get to the scriptures and hear what uh, we have right here in Jesus' mighty name. Right, Apostle Vic, you ready? Let's turn together to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. If you have it, say, I have it. I have it. Perfect. Numbers chapter 22. Uh, you can do some social distancing with your microphone. Otherwise, you blow up my ears. <laughs> Just uh, keep some, maintain some uh, one meter distance <laughs> before you blow up my ears here. <laughs> Somebody sent me a message and said, Ah, prophet, don't talk like that with your, with your keyboard guy. Each time I always say, Mladis, I'll slap you. <laughs> and those who are watching will be like, Hey, he's going to be, hey. no, no, guys, come on. I, it's just a small slap, you know. It's no, it's nothing much, you know. Just a ta, you know. It's not that heavy one. It's just, you know, that baby slap, you know. That come back, come back, you know. <laughs> All right, let's go together to the book of Numbers. If you have uh, have it, Apostle, say I have it. I have it. Numbers chapter twenty-two. I want you to read for me, uh, from verse. Um, I want you to read for me from verse number. From verse number one. Just start from verse number one, uh, going down. Verse one. Right. And the children of Israel set forward. And the children of Israel set forward and did what? And pitched in the plains of Moab. And pitched in the plains of? Moab. Moab. Let's go. On the side of Jordan by Jericho. On the side of Jordan by the Jericho. Let's go. And Balak the son of Zippo. And Balak the son of who? Zippo. Uh, let's go. So all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Okay, let's go. And Moab was so afraid of the people. Okay. Because they were many. Mm. And Moab was distressed mm. because of the children I, I, of Israel. I want you to repeat that part again. The Bible says Moab was afraid of the people. Why? Because they were many. Because they were many. So... Growth and multiplication is an intimidation to the enemy. Growth and multiplication is a serious intimidation to the devil. Uh, the enemy is not intimidated by stagnation. That is why the day that you started moving was the day you started having people attacking you. For dogs will never bark at a stagnant car. They always bark at a car that is moving. No wonder why the Back to Christ movement is fought severely all over the world because it is a move me. It, 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 it is a movement. It is not a stagnation. That is why it is not the Back to Christ stagnation, but it is called the Back to Christ movement. It is a movement that is uh, touching so many countries. You know, I believe that uh, one day we are going to sit down and we are going to thank God for what. He is doing even in our time right now because I, I strongly have a strong uh, conviction and a strong belief that uh, uh, just touch, 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 just a little bit, you know, no, 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 not too much. I, I have a very strong conviction that after 
after everything is said and done, the mission that God has given to me uh, to pave the way, you know, just like John the Baptist, to pave the way for, for the next coming generation, to pave the way for, for those who are going to come, uh, 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 to pave the way for, for the other young stars, you know, like myself, to pave the way for the other young ministers, for the other young pastors who are going to come even after me, and we are going to come as well. I, it, somebody might not understand what I am doing right now, and someone might think, oh, he's exposing our fathers and he's exposing our pastors, but it, it's, it's not about exposure. You know, it, it is about a, 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 a taking the whole world back to Christ and making people understand that for the very longest time, we, the place of Christ has been occupied by men who did not proclaim clearly that they are occupying the place of Christ, but they occupied the place of Christ using certain doctrines, certain doctrines that they used. That is why, as I've been saying, and I'll continue saying it again up until somebody understands it, that that is why you see that in, in many churches you don't give a testimony and thank God, but you give a testimony to thank the pastor. So now you realize that the pastor has taken the place of Christ he has taken the position of Christ. He has taken the position of God himself. So I believe that one day uh, in the near future, one day probably when I'm gone, when, I'm, when, when the Lord has called me back home, many people will live to remember that there was a young man who he had a very big head, you know, <laughs> and, and a very big nose like that. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm finishing all the oxygen in this, in this, in this room right now. You know, I can I can smell tomorrow today. Yeah, I can, I can smell my breakfast already as I'm sitting here. <laughs> the breakfast I'll eat tomorrow. I'm smelling it right now. That's how big my nose is. So, yeah. So I want you to know that um, it is it is it is something that a lot of people will live to remember in the future. You know, uh, when 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 falsehood becomes an institution. When, when falsehood becomes an institution, the truth sounds like rebellion. That is what people must understand. Because we, have, we are now so used to falsehood. We are now so used to fake miracles. We are now so used to uh, fake prophecies. We are now so used to the, the fake manifestation of the power of God with a small g. Now, eh, 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 whenever we come with the truth and we challenge things that have been in existence for a long time which is falsehood now it sounds like we are rebellious you know yet we are not rebellious but this is the truth that we are bringing you know it is the truth that we are bringing forth so that everybody may understand the truth and 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 live to know that uh, this is the truth of the gospel and and this is the truth that we have to stand for so you might not understand now but I can assure you that in the next five, ten years, you will live to remember everything that I'm saying right now. So, so multiplication is, is an intimidation to the enemy. The enemy is not intimidated by you when you are at home sleeping, but the enemy is intimidated by you when you start moving. That is why no matter what happens, no matter what, what happens in your life, just continue moving. Just keep moving, don't stop, because movement is an intimidation to the enemy. Continue, Apostle Vic. And Moab was so afraid of the people uh -huh. because they were many. Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. Let's go. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Can you just raise your microphone a little bit? And Moab said unto the elders of Midian. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Continue, continue. And Balak, the son of Zippo. Okay, let's go. So Balak was king of the Moabites at the time. Let's go. He sent messengers therefore unto Balak, the son of Beor. Ah, saying what? Uh huh. Uh huh. Him, say, mm -hmm. Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Okay. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, mm. and they abide over against. 
there are people who have come out of the face of Egypt and they have what? They have covered the face of the earth and then and they abide over against me. Let's go. Come now, therefore. Uh-huh. Let's go. Mm-hmm. For they are too mighty for me. Come and curse for me, these people. Why? For they are too mighty for me. Okay, so because they are too mighty, now uh, there is a man who is now being uh, uh, approached to say, please come and curse them for me uh, simply because they are now too mighty. Continue. Uh, peradventure I shall prevail. Let's go. That we may smite them. Uh-huh. And that I may drive them out of the land. That we may smite them and also drive them out of the land. For I watch that he whom thou blessest is mm. blessed. Okay. And he whom thou kissest is cursed. I want you to take that scripture again. Take it again. Come now therefore. Come now therefore. I pray thee. I pray thee. Kiss me this people. Can you give him a volume on his microphone? Come now and curse thee, these people. Let's go. For they are too mighty for me. I can't hear. Uh, please put volume there. Come now, therefore. Come now, therefore. I pray thee. I pray thee. Let's curse go. Curse me, these people. Uh huh. For they are too mighty for me. Right. Let's go. Peradventure, I shall prevail. Mm. That we may smite them. Now come and curse for me, these people so that I may prevail. Let's go. That we may smite them. That we may smite them. Let's go. And that I may drive them out of the land. Uh-huh. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed. Okay. For him thou blessest is blessed. So whoever you will bless is blessed and whoever you will curse is cursed. Let's go. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Okay, let's go, let's go. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. Mm. And he said unto them, mm. Lord, hear this night, mm. and I will bring you word again. And they said unto them, Lord, hear this night, uh -huh. as the Lord shall speak unto me. As the Lord shall speak unto me, let's go. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam, let's go. And God came unto Balaam uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. What men are these with thee? Mm. And Balaam said unto God, mm. Balak the son of Zippo, okay. king of Moab, had sent unto me, saying, mm. Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, okay. which covered the face of the earth. So Balak, the son of Zippo, is now trying to give an explanation of uh, what he had transpired. But at the end of the day, everybody must get to an understanding that because the Bible says, okay, I will bless whoever you will bless. This is what God said to Abraham. That whoever blesses you shall be blessed. And whoever curses you shall be cursed. These are the same words that God spoke again to Cain. After Cain had killed his brother Abel, God spoke those same words again and he said, I shall make you a vagabond. But whoever will meet you and try to touch you, I will touch them myself. So there was a misunderstanding of the scriptures. You realize that these gentlemen, because of their personal vendettas and their personal things, uh, their personal scores that they wanted to settle, you will begin to realize that uh, they wanted to use the Bible. They wanted to use the scriptures. The scriptures to manipulate whatever they wanted to achieve, but using the scriptures. And they realized that they cannot uh, 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 use the scriptures and finish their assignment without inviting a prophet. Uh, I, I want you to just go back again, Apostle Vic, uh, just, uh, and, and take it again. Uh, just go back and take it again, maybe three verses be, uh, behind. Let's go. And God came unto Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said what? And said, what men are these with thee? And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with you? And Balaam said unto God. And Balaam said unto God. Balak the son of Zippo. Balak the son of Zippo. Let's go. King of Moab has sent unto me the saying. The king of Moab has sent unto me saying. Let's go. 
Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. There are people who have come out of the land of Egypt. Which covereth the face of the earth. They are too many. We cannot conquer them. Come now, kiss me them. They are too many. We cannot conquer them. They are too many. We cannot finish them. They are too many. We cannot touch them. But the only way that we can touch them, we have tried to use guns, we have tried to use all the ammunition that we have, but everything seems to be failing. So what is it that we can resort to? Then the Bible says they approached a prophet. Let's go. Peradventure, I shall be able to overcome them. Peradventure, I shall be able to overcome them. Who was speaking here? It was uh, Balak. Balak is the one who was speaking. Let's go. And God said unto Balaam, Uh huh. Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not go with them. Let's Thou go. Thou shalt not curse the people. Thou shalt not curse the people. For they are blessed. Ah, uh, who was God talking to? To Balaam. God is now talking to the prophet called Balaam and saying, Where they want you to go, this is a conversation that is taking place between a prophet and God. And God is saying, Where you want to go, uh, it's a mission impossible. And because it is a mission impossible, uh, uh, God was trying to stop him from going there. Uh, continue. Continue. And Balaam rose up in the morning. What's happening with the volume? Huh? Ish. But the microphone was fine. What happened? Huh? Ah, guys. No, man. Continue reading. Verse 18. Uh -huh. And Balaam rose up in the morning. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said what? And said unto the princes of Balak. And he said unto the princes of Balak. Let's go. Get you into your land. For the Lord refuseth to give Get me you leave. into the land. For the Lord refuseth. Let's go. To give me leave to go with you. God is refusing to give me the leave to go together with you. And the princes of Moab rose up. I cannot go with you because God is denying me the fact that I must go. Let's go. The, and the princes of Moab rose up. And the princes of Moab rose up to say what? And they went unto Balak and said... Uh -huh. Balaam refuseth to come with us. Let's go, let's go, let's and go. And Balak sent yet again, uh -huh. more and more honorable than they. Uh, so now you, you realize that the first messenger that was sent to uh, Balaam the prophet, they were not as honorable as uh, the ones that were sent, uh, the ones that followed afterwards. Guys, I don't want movements here, please. The first crew was not as honorable as the crew that followed. Okay. And the more Balaam was refusing and denying the fact that I will go and do the assignment that Balak is giving me, the Bible makes it very clear that uh, Balak decided to send even more people who were more honorable than the ones who were sent first. Let's go. And they came to Balaam and said mm -hmm. to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, uh -huh. Let nothing, I pray thee, right. hinder thee from coming unto me. Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming to me. Let's go. For I will promote thee okay. unto very great honor. I will promote thee unto what? Very great honor. So you realize that we have got some instances that I want us to look at. We have got God who is speaking to Balaam. We have got Balak who is speaking to Balaam. But because God is trying to stop Balaam from going to Balak, Balak is now using everything in his power to persuade Balaam from coming. Touch your neighbor, say, prophets for sale. Continue. For I will promote thee unto very great honor. I will promote thee unto what? Very great honor. Unto what? Very great honor. I will promote thee unto very great honor. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the devil is a liar. 
Balak is the ruler of the, of the city. Balak is the ruler of the land, the ruler of the country, is the ruler of the kingdom. And Balaam is so intimidated, uh, Balak is intimidated by people who have filled up the whole place. And because of the intimidation, Balak is inviting a prophet. Oh my God, continue. Uh, this this is going to be very interesting. Uh, let's go, let's go. And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Anything you say you want, I will do it for you. In other words, Balak was trying to say, mention a prize and I will give it unto you as long as you are going to curse the people. Uh, <laughs> By cursing the people, I want you to speak with your mouth in such a way that at the end of the day, they must be left with nothing in their lives. Let's go. Come, therefore, I pray thee. Ah, uh, Come, therefore, I pray thee. Let's go. Curse me, these people. Uh -huh. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. Let's go. If Balak would give me his house. If Balaam... <laughs> take it again, take it again. And Balaam mm -hmm. answered and said unto the servants of Balak. Balaam answered and said what? If Balak would give me his house. If Balaam can give me his house, already there is a price that is being put on the plate. A price is being put on the table. What is the price? Let's go. Full of silver and gold. If he gives me a house that is full of silver and gold. So the greedy prophets did not start in 2020. The greedy prophets started during the time of Balaam. Let's go. I cannot go beyond the word of the I Lord. I don't want disturbance here. What I'm about to say right now is something that is... Uh, 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 uh. Just take it again. Take it again. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. Balaam answered and said unto the servants of... <laughs> let's go, let's go. If, Bala, if Balak would give me his house... If Balaam can... If, if Balak can give me his house... Full of silver and gold. Uh, I want the house of Balak. As long as the house is full of silver and gold, I will disobey the voice of God and listen to the house and the silver and gold. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, 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 Balaam is ready to dishonor, disobey, and reject the voice of God for the sake of a house that is full of silver and gold. So Balaam is no longer a prophet of God, but Balaam is now a prophet for sale. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God. Ah, let's go, let's Do go. Do less or more. Mm. Now therefore I pray you. Ah, go back, go back again. Just take it again one last time. Verse 18. Uh-huh, verse 18. And Balaam answered and said uh -huh. unto the servants of Balak. Yes. If Balak would give me his house. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. Uh -huh. If Balak would give me his house full of silver if and gold. If Balak can give me his house that is full of silver and gold, I will what? I cannot go beyond the uh, word. Of so the meaning Lord. to say, anybody who comes with a, oh Jesus, the highest bidder is the one who goes home with a miracle. And the lowest bidder is the one who goes back home with a disappointment. So you get to a place and you are thinking you are going to a church. Not knowing that you are going to a miracle auction. You are going to a prophecy auction. So the prophecies and the miracles are auctioned in such a way that the highest bidder is the one who goes back home carrying a miracle and carrying a prophecy. What do I mean by this? Balak sent a message to Balaam and said, I want you to come and resolve an issue in my kingdom. Uh, but Balaam said, for me to resolve that issue, you must give me a house that is full of silver and gold. So because of silver and gold, the children of Israel are about to be cursed. <laughs> but I want you to know something, that God himself gave a warning to Balaam. Before Balaam even went on to put his prize to whatever that he wanted to get. Before he put down a price tag, God himself gave a warning to Balaam and he said, Do not embark on this journey that you are about to embark on. For this journey is not a good journey. You are about to fall from grace. You are about to uh, 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 disappear from my presence. But because of money, because of silver, because of gold, because of greed... Balaam said, I will dishonor God and I will obey ah, Mammon. 
I will dishonor God and I will obey the God of Mammon. So many of you, as you are watching me right now, over the past few years, you thought you were going to church. Uh, <laughs> not knowing that every Sunday service when you are sitting down there and you hear the pastor preaching, tonight you will receive your miracle. You run with a seat. It's an auction. That the, Oh my God. Oh Jesus. <laughs> you even hear some other people saying, the, the bigger your seat, the bigger your miracle. This is an auction. This is not a church service. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here. This is an auction. Some miracles are being auctioned right here. So the highest bidder is the one who goes home with a miracle. So what happens to the poor guy who does not have a job, who does not have money, who does not even have a cent to put on the altar? What happens to him? That means he walks away carrying nothing. Why? Because it is an auction, not a house of God. I declare and I decree that in this year 2020, all these prophetic and miracle auction houses shall be shut down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go, Apostle Vic. Now, verse number 19. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, I pray you. Ah, verse number 19. Now, therefore, I pray thee. Let's go. Tarry ye also here ah, this night. That is why you hear uh, uh, each time you, you are about to go and see the men of God, they will ask you, how much seed do you have? You are about to enter into a business transaction uh, with a prophet for sale. I will name them today. <laughs> we are going to name them one by one tonight uh, just to give an assessment to see which one is for sale and which one is not for sale. We are going to name them today. Let's go, Apostle Vic. Tari also here this night. Uh, the truth has got no feelings. The truth does not care whether you are whether you are anointed or you think you are the most anointed prophet. The truth has got no feelings. Let's go. Tarry ye also here this night. Tarry ye also here this night. Uh -huh. That I may know what the Lord will say ah, unto me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And God came unto Balaam. And night. God came unto Balaam. Uh, God is a, is a very lenient man. After Balaam has put a price tag to the miracles that do not belong to him. So Mr. Balaam the prophet, why are you selling miracles that you are not the manufacturer of them? God is the giver of miracles. God is the giver of prophecies. But Balaam, you have now a, a taken miracles and you are putting them on auction. Simply because you are greedy. You are a greedy prophet. Uh, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And God go. came unto Balaam at night. And God came unto Balaam at night and said and what? Say, and said unto him, uh, if the man come to call thee. Prophets for sale. <laughs> prophets for sale. Let's go. If the man come to call thee, uh -huh. rise up and go with them. If the man comes to call thee, rise up and go with them. Let's go. But yet the word which I shall God say is very thee. lenient. Let's go. Yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt uh -huh. thou do. The word I will say unto you, that is what you are going to do. Okay. Because they want you to go and curse my people. Huh? How do you go and auction miracles in front of my people at the expense of my people? Instead of feeding my people with the right food, you are going to auction miracles to the highest bidder. The one who is coming with a lot of money. Uh, this nonsense must come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm telling you. Let's go, Apostle. And Balaam rose up in the morning mm. and saddled his donkey mm. and went with the princes of Moab. Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And God's anger was kindled because uh -huh. he went. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an <laughs> adversary against him. So the proximity between yourself and your men of God is the, <laughs> is the amount of money that you put on the altar. The proximity or the distance between you and your pastor is the amount of money that you place as an offering. So the highest tither, that is why some of these churches, they even give, a, 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 they give a, a, a awards. They give awards to say the highest tither this year is Mr. Uh, Bonu, uh, Apostle Victor. Everybody will come and they'll be clapping for him. Yeah. He's the highest tither this year only. He has tithed up to 45 million runs. And then you are sitting there uh, as a jobless young man who has never even touched 1,000 runs and you are asking yourself, God. So the only prayer that all those people that are praying in that church is to say, I want to become the next biggest tither. 
So nobody is praying to become the next biggest thing in the kingdom of God so that they can go and do soul winning. Nobody is saying, I want to become the next biggest soul winner. But everybody's prayer is to become the next biggest tither. Why? Because he also wants an award. Listen, that is a scam. Prophets for sale. Those prophets are for sale. Whatever that they are doing, those are marketing strategies. That is a business. Each day you go, you think you're going to church simply because the man, when he comes to preach, he comes carrying a Bible. There's nothing like that. A man can be carrying a Bible and still steal from your pockets while he's just carrying a Bible. Let's go, Apostle Vic. Let's go. Now he was riding upon his donkey. Ah, let's go, let's go. And his two servants were with him. Uh-huh. And the donkey saw the angel. Now he was rising upon the donkey and together they were going to... <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Now, Balaam is not the one who's seeing angels. But the transport that is now being used is the one that is seeing angels. Let's go. And the donkey saw the angel. The donkey saw an angel and did what? And his sword was drawn in his hand. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, Apostle Vic. And the donkey turned aside out of the way. After the donkey saw the angel, what happened? And went into the field. The donkey went into the field. Let's go. And Balaam smote the donkey mm -hmm. to turn her into the way. Stop beating the donkey because the donkey is having an encounter. You don't understand what is going on here. <laughs> Mr. Prophet, stop beating the donkey because the donkey has just had a powerful encounter with an angel of God. The donkey is going the wrong direction according to you as a prophet because you have missed the mark. You have lost the glory. You have lost the anointing. That is why the donkey is going the opposite direction. <laughs> so right now you are crying and saying, no, why is the donkey going the opposite direction? It is because the donkey is having an encounter. Let's go, Apostle Vic. And when the donkey... Sorry, verse number 25. Uh-huh. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyard. The angel of the Lord stood in a path of a vineyard. Let's go. A wall being this side and a wall on that side. Uh -huh. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, mm. she thrust herself into the wall uh -huh. and crushed Balaam's foot mm. against the wall. Mm. And he smote her again. Uh -huh. and, the angel of, and the angel of the Lord went further mm. and stood in a narrow place uh -huh. where was no way to turn either to the left or to the right. <laughs> let's go, let's and go. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, uh -huh. she fell down under Balaam. Ah, so, so, so the donkey is falling down and the donkey is seeing angels that the prophet is not seeing. <laughs> no wonder why God is raising donkeys in our time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The donkey is the means of transport that is being used to go to a place that God has said, don't go. And the donkey is having an encounter. So it is possible to be a donkey and have an encounter. The donkey seems to be that animal that is a, 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 probably a, 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 an outcast during that time. An animal that is probably like an outcast at the, at, at the time. So what do I mean? What am I talking about? There are people <laughs> that the prophet Balaam is riding on, trying to use them to get to the place where God has said, do not go. So it is possible that God can raise an usher who cleans the toilet to have a powerful encounter with an angel, yet the prophet who is mighty and standing on the altar thinking he is still with God, is no longer with God because God has now raised an usher, a small usher who is probably 15, 16 years old that nobody ever thought God can ever use. It is possible. It is possible that you can be in a church where your pastor's name is Balaam. And Balaam has been rejected by God already. And God is raising small people that you... Oh my God. Let's go, Apostle Vic. Let's take it bit by bit. Let's go. And Balaam's anger was kindled. Balaam's anger was kindled. Uh -huh. He smote the donkey with a staff. Why are you beating the donkey, Mr. Balaam? Ah, you see now, that, that, that is where I have the problem. Do not beat the donkey, but listen to God. 
Stop rebuking your sons and daughters in the church, Mr. Prophet. Simply because you think they are losing direction and, and they are going the other way that you do not want them to go and you start cursing them. Stop cursing your members because they are leaving you. They are leaving you because they are having an encounter that you are not having. Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's and go. the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey uh -huh. and she said unto Balaam, mm. What have I done unto thee? Even a donkey that has never had God in its entire life is now hearing God because there is a Balaam who has disobeyed God. Do you realize that eh, 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 anytime you disobey God and you think you are a highly, mightily, powerfully anointed a, a man of God, God can just raise a small donkey from next door. A small donkey from next door and the donkey will begin to hear God in your presence. I'm taking it bit by bit. Let's go. What have I done unto thee mm. that thou hast smitten me these three times? Uh -huh. And Balaam said unto the donkey, uh -huh. Because thou hast mocked me. The donkey is now asking, why are you beating me? Do you not know that I just had an encounter with an angel? And as a prophet, I'm expecting you to know that I just encountered an angel, but you are coming to beat me up. Why? There are certain things that happen in churches, and you think it is disobedience, yet it is disobeying a man, yet somebody is obeying God. You didn't hear what I said. There are so many people whom pastors and prophets for sale think that they are disobeying God. Not knowing that they are disobeying them, but they are obeying God. So let me just tell you wherever you are right now. The day you pegged your bags to leave that church because you saw the amount of falsehood. And you began to speak against falsehood. Listen, and then Balaam, the prophet for sale, started speaking against you. And then started cursing you. Do not even worry about it. You are not the first one. Go and ask Balaam's donkey. Let's go. I would, there were a sword in mm. my hand. Uh -huh. For now would I kill thee. Uh -huh. And the donkey said unto Balaam. Mm. Am not I thine donkey, mm. upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine? Am I not thy donkey? Am I not your donkey? Why do you want to kill me today? Simply because I had an encounter with God. Now you want to kill me. <laughs> ah, Jesus. May God help you to have an encounter, a personal encounter, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, one of the things that I've realized is that so many people have got a problem with me whenever I talk about my encounter because they have never encountered God in their lives. Everybody has got an encounter with, uh, has got a problem with my encounter. So whenever I come out and I say I had an encounter with Christ and this is what happened, a lot of people will come out guns blazing, attacking and speaking nonsense. But the reason why you are always attacking my encounter is because you have never encountered God in your life. The day that you encounter God in your life at a personal level, I'm telling you, you will not need any pastor to come and lay hands on you. Why? Because God himself will be the one who will be speaking to you. A lot of people have a big problem. Ah, J. Israel, who delivered you? The problem you have is that you are expecting to see me in Nigeria, in the church of your favorite prophet. That's what you're expecting to see me. I was talking to somebody this afternoon and I said, listen, in my, as, I'm, as I'm talking to you now, I don't trust any person to lay hands on my head. Anybody, I don't trust anybody. No matter how mighty or uh, uh, powerful you think they might be, I don't trust anybody to lay hands on me. I do not trust anybody to lay hands on me. I don't trust. Your, the, the problem with so many people is that they're expecting to see me in Nigeria. Because they, that, uh, 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 they, are, they, they, are, they, are, they are prophet for sale there in Nigeria. Is the one that they think, oh no, because he's casting demons and doing this. And say, out, 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 out. So because J. Israel, they've never seen J. Israel shaking when a prophet is doing that's nonsense man that's for that's for that's for immature a, a, a christians how can you be a child of god and you 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 go to a prophet and he does this and you start shaking you say oh now i'm delivered huh? where is the demon yet you claim to be a child of god 
I spoke about deliverance. I'm not about to preach about this, but I spoke about deliverance the other day. Uh, 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 the, the true meaning of and the true definition of deliverance. I spoke about it already. So many people are expecting to see that a, a J. Israel has visited a, a Nigeria. And J. Israel, we are seeing him right now on TV. He's sitting in front. And then the prophet comes and says, you come. You are a false prophet. We are taking away the spirit of false prophet. And then they will shake, shake, shake. Then I will fall down. Then I will stand up and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm delivered. That's nonsense. <laughs> that is rubbish. I will never do that nonsense in my life. That is nonsense. That's for immature Christians. That's for immature believers. And who even told you that that is the best way of doing deliverance? Who told you that for you to be delivered, a hand has to be laid on you and then you have to roll on the ground and then you have to vomit. Then after you vomit, a, a snake comes out and a frog. <laughs> People are misguided. Read your scriptures very well. Go through your scriptures. Understand your word very well. You will begin to realize that salvation is deliverance. The day that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and then you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost, and you begin to speak in tongues, that is your salvation moment. That you are being saved. Salvation is being delivered from the, from the, from the uh, 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 kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That is salvation. And afterwards, after you are delivered uh, 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 through salvation, then the next thing that follows is the transformation and the renewal of your mind. How does it happen? By reading and studying the word of God. How many times have you fallen down? How many times have you traveled? I know a lot of people say, no, we want to see you being delivered. We want to see uh, uh, you uh, being delivered. I will never be, go and bow to these uh, 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 prophets for sale. I will never do that. I'll never go and bow down before any fake prophet. These are all false prophets. Using familiar spirits to lie to people. I know that the Nigerian one, uh, this one who prophesied that Corona will end in March, is your favorite. And you're expecting me to go there. I'll never go there. He's a false prophet. He's not a prophet of God. He's a false prophet. He's not from God. And everything that he does in his church is false. Is using a spirit of divination. If you have got discernment, you will descend the spirit and you will know that this is what happens. I have a, 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 a certain a, a pastor I was talking to just a few days ago and uh, he was telling me that there's a woman who actually went to Nigeria for, for, for prayers. This woman went to Nigeria for prayers. When she went to Nigeria for prayers, she met this uh, a prophet, your favorite prophet. And then she was told that, no, wait, you'll see the man of God last. When she got into the office, the man of God wanted to kiss her. And when she was telling this guy, the guy was saying, no, it's a lie. You, you're attacking the man of God. And the, 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 this pastor was, was telling me that, listen, at that time I didn't believe it. But now I believe it because of the things that you are saying about all these prophets. Now I believe that these people are capable of doing such nonsense. If he's a true prophet of God, how many how many? people that were sacrificed by this Nigerian prophet that you love the most? How many people did he sacrifice in Nigeria when his building uh, collapsed? How many people died in that building? How can he come and prophesy that a uh, corona will end in March, yet he could not prophesy his, the collapsing of his own building? And South Africans, a lot of South African people died in that uh, 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 scenario and in that incident. And you are still coming to tell me that he's a true prophet of God. You might as well take him and go together to hell. That's where you belong. Apostle V, continue. Verse 31. Uh -huh. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and said what? And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Ah. And his sword drawn in mm -hmm, his hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he bowed down his face. Let's go, let's go. And fell flat on his face. And he bowed down his face and fell flat on the ground. Let's go. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, mm. Wherefore hast thou smitten thine donkey uh -huh. three times? Uh -huh. Behold, I went out to withstand thee. You are right. Because thy way is perverse uh -huh. for me. The way is what? Perverse. Ah, uh, okay, let's go. Me. And the donkey saw me and turned from me these three times. Uh -huh. 
unless she had turned from me, mm. surely now also I had slain thee mm. and saved her life. So, the, for the sake of the donkey, your life was saved. Mm. Uh -huh, let's go, Apostle. Anyway, and, let's... And, uh -huh. and Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, Right. I have sinned, mm -hmm. for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way mm. against me. Okay. Now, may God bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to understand something about tonight's message that uh, a lot of people are going to be offended tonight. I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to be offended tonight because the, the more we call a spade a spade, not a farming tool, the, the sooner we achieve the results of setting people free from bondage. The, the problem that we have had over the years is that we have always tried to say, no, it's not a spade. It's, it's not a spade. It's, 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 it's a farming tool. Oh, no, it's not a, it's not a spade. Oh, no, 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 no. no. That, that, that is why falsehood has continued to reign. Even up to now, falsehood is reigning, but I'm telling you, the reigning of falsehood is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. In my time, as long as I live, I know that God is raising other people as well. But as long as I live in my time, anything that has to do with falsehood will expose it. Do not have any fellowship with the things of ungodliness, but expose them. That is what the Bible says. So Balaam is the prophet, and Balak is the king. The king has just seen Israelites. We have flooded the whole place. I want you to go to um, a chapter 24, Apostle Vic. Or oh, chapter 23, sorry. Chapter 23. Because the Israelites had flooded the land and they were all over the place. The king Balak was intimidated. And they realized that there is no way that they can outnumber them and defeat them. And he said, how am I going to defeat these people? Let me invite a prophet. <laughs> According to the Old Testament, the prophets of the Old Testament carried power. That is why even kings had respect for the prophets because of the power that they carried. Even the kings of that time knew that if you invite a prophet, something will happen. Not all these theories that we hear in our time. These are just theories. Theories. It's just theories. There's nothing there. So look at this. Balak offers, okay, and he says, anything you need, Mr. Prophet, I will give you. Name your price. Whatever it can be, I'll give it to you. As long as you promise me one thing, that you're going to curse these people for me. <laughs> I'm about to say something that... Uh, <laughs> curse them for me and you will get your money. And then Balaam said, Go and tell Balak that he must give me his house. Not only his house, but he must give me his house together with silver, gold, inside the house. If I'm to take you to our time, the prophet was, uh, was probably saying, go and tell the president that he must give me his White House. He must give me his uh, Ferrari, his Lamborghini, his Rolls Royce, his uh, Bugatti, his, uh, 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 his limousine, and he must also make sure that my bank account is not breathing. If we're to bring it to our time. But if I'm to ask a question and say, is it not happening already in our time that prophets are on sale? <laughs> Let's, let, let me just take you back a little bit. Initially, God is speaking to Balaam and God is saying, Balaam, don't go because the assignment is not from me. But then after some time, Balak disobeys God. Balaam disobeys God simply because there is money that has been put on the, on the table. There are prophets who started well, 
But because of money, they diverted the calling. There are pastors who started well, but because of the offers of Balak. Listen, Balak is not being used by God, but Balak is used by the devil. Balak is being used by a system of this world. Balak is being used by the Antichrist. So because we have got the Antichrist in our time, so many, uh, 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 so many false prophets, all these jackals that we are always fighting, we are going to name them tonight one by one. We are going to name them and we will put them out there for sale. So all these jackals that we are putting out there, they have bowed down to the God of Mammon, to the Antichrist, to the God of this world. They have gone down on their knees. And they have succumbed to the power of the God of this world. That is why you see the church, the body of Christ, is in a mess today. Because those we trusted as fathers of the gospel, they have now submitted themselves to the system of this world. So those we trusted as the fathers of the prophetic, uh, those we trusted as the fathers of the apostolic movement, those we trusted as the fathers or, 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 or the bishops, the, 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 the fathers of the gospel, they have bowed down to mammon and mammon is now reigning in their lives. They have compromised the gospel for the sake of money. They have compromised the gospel for the sake of funding. So many church buildings that you see, all oh, these are false pastors, false apostles, false prophets, and uh, 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 false bishops building and everything. These are funds that are coming from a corrupt system of the government of their countries. Why? Because they have bowed down. Nobody is able to stand up and speak against Balak and say, Balak, you want to oppress our people. You want to oppress the people of God. I'm not going to permit you to do that, but I'm going to allow the judgment of God to reign over your life. Nobody has got the power and the guts to do so because they know that they cannot speak against an evil system during the day and go to bed at night together with that system. So, so many false prophets, they can't speak against the system of this world. That is why even in the African continent, each and every day we are being oppressed. For example, Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans are being oppressed by the evil regime. Zimbabweans are being oppressed by the evil government of Zimbabwe. They arrested a journalist a few, a few days ago. They arrested a journalist in Zimbabwe. I'm sorry to say this. I, no, I don't speak about politics. I don't like speaking about things. But this, I have to talk about it. This is what happened. A few days ago, they arrested a journalist in Zimbabwe. Because the journalist was exposing. The journalist was exposing the money that was being stolen from the government. The journalist was exposing all the corruption that was happening in the government. Oh my God. And as the journalist was exposing corruption, how I saw a picture of a man who was being charged for corruption standing next together to the journalist who was arrested for exposing corruption. How do you arrest a man who is exposing corruption together with the corrupt politicians and you lock them up in the same prison? How, how do you justify that? So we have got Balak, who is the king, the president, who is now going to bed together with the prophet called Balaam. And they are sleeping in the same bed at night. So Balaam cannot stand and speak against the evil regime because Balaam is benefiting from the evil government. So many prophets in Africa cannot speak against uh, 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 evil African presidents because they know that they are benefiting at night from the evil government uh, 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 that they are submitting to. For example, in Zimbabwe, as we speak right now, people will be beating about the bushes, beating around the bushes, beating about the bushes, beating about the bushes. Not even one person can stand up. Only one person in Zimbabwe that I know, one has managed to stand up as a preacher to speak against the evil regime and the evil government of Zimbabwe. The truth is the truth. The government of Zimbabwe is evil. It is an evil government that is oppressing its own people and the prophets of Zimbabwe, they do not have the power and the authority to speak against the evil government of Zimbabwe because they are benefiting from the evil system of Zimbabwe. 
if things do not change in the nation of Zimbabwe, the president of Zimbabwe, who is the current president right now in Zimbabwe, is going to die a very painful death. Because of the oppression that they are putting on the people of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a Christian nation. Zimbabwe is a Christian country. Zimbabwe belongs to God. All this evil oppression that is going on in the country of Zimbabwe, why arrest a, an honest a individual who is helping you to expose criminals? Because you are afraid that even your names as those high politicians in Zimbabwe will also be exposed. That is why you are now arresting the poor guy. Release that poor journalist. He has a family to take care of. He's earning a living out of an honest uh, whatever that he's doing in journalism. Release him. When the president of Zimbabwe got into power, he said we are going to arrest all the corrupt politicians. Now there is a man who is helping you to expose corruption. You are arresting him. So what do you stand for? What do you stand for? What do you stand for? What does the government of Zimbabwe stand for? What do you stand for? Are you in power to empower people? Or you are in power to kill the people? Anybody who stands against corruption dies. It does not only happen in Zimbabwe, it happens everywhere. It's only in South Africa where you, you have freedom of speech. It's only in South Africa where you can speak against the, uh, 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 expose whatever you want to expose as long as it is corruption and they will just allow you to leave. In Zimbabwe, expose one corrupt politician. Before you know it, you'll be locked up in the prison. The same corruption is happening in the body of Christ. The prophets of God, the prophets of God, small g, are going to bed, sleeping together with the corrupt systems of Africa. Go to Nigeria, you will see a prophet building a big 500,000 seater church. And the church, millions and millions of runs are being spent. Millions and dollars, millions of dollars are being spent to build a church. So that they can accommodate 500,000 poor people. It doesn't make sense. And you come out and say, it is the house of the Lord that we are building. It doesn't make perfect sense. How do you spend Hundreds and millions of U.S. dollars building, uh, it, it, it is happening in Nigeria. They are building auditoriums that take up to 500,000 people in Nigeria. Hundreds of thousands of dollars are being spent. Where is that money coming from? It is coming from the poor people's offerings that they put on the altar. At the end of the day, the church accommodates 500,000 poor people. We've got nothing. No food, no income, no nothing. All they get every Sunday is promises of good life that will never come. Promises of a good life that they'll never see. Promises of a good life that they'll never taste. Prophets for sale. These are false prophets. They are charlatans. They are jackals. They don't represent God. They are not in it for the souls. They are not in it for God's people. But they are in it for their own bellies and for their own tummies. Let's go, uh, 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 Apostle, read from verse number 1. Chapter 23, verse uh -huh. 1. And Balaam said unto Balak, And Balaam said unto Balaam, let's go. Build me here seven altars. Now you realize that uh, uh, eventually Balaam strike a deal together with Balak. And a deal was striked between Balaam and Balak. And they got into an agreement that I am going to give you whatever you want. But as long as you curse the people, I will give you anything you want. Read Apostle. Build me here seven altars. Now they are building altars to curse the people of God. How do you build an altar so that God's people can be cursed? What is this? And prepare me here seven oxen. How do you build an altar? To go and curse innocent individuals. Hmm? Ah, this is evil, man. Let's go. Continue. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. They built seven altars. And then what happened next? And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a what? A, a bullock. bullock and a ram. And a ram. 
Uh -huh. And Balaam said unto Balak, Let me just stop right there. This kind of offering is being done in the Old Testament. We don't do this nonsense in the New Testament. I'll, I'll repeat it again. This kind of offering, this kind of sacrificial offering that Balaam was doing, to say he was doing, he was putting a sacrifice on the altar so that he can provoke God and then God will give him the, 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 the audacity, the tenacity and the power to go and curse the children of God. It's, it, it ended in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, all these things do not apply. So any pastor who will tell you that you need to place a sacrifice so that God can bless you, prophets for sale. Place an offering so that God can remember you, prophets for sale. For God to touch your life, you need to put down a sacrificial seed. Every beginning of the year, you have to put down a, a, a first fruit, prophets for sale, pastors for sale, bishops for sale. First fruit, uh, all your salary, you have to take it to church for sale. Are, are, you, are you following this? For sale, these are prophets for sale. These are not prophets of God. So this kind of giving, where you give sacrificially, that is why all these prophets you see online, immediately you start talking to them. You need to give. Immediately you start talking to them. Anything you start talking about, the next thing that follows is seed. The next thing that follows is still is seed. They are not operating according to the to the to the to the grace, eh, 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 to the covenant of grace. They are not operating according to the era of grace. They are still operating under the law. For we are no longer living under the law, but we are living, uh, we are now living under the grace. So all these sacrifices of bullocks and ram and everything, they were a shadow of the actual sacrifice to come in the New Testament. What is the shadow? The shadow is the sacrifice of rain, sacrifice of bullocks, sacrifice of uh, animals. What is the real object? Jesus being sacrificed on the altar and the finished work on the cross. That is the ultimate sacrifice that has been sacrificed for you and I. So there is no need for you to give a sacrifice in church so that God can remember you. That is a prophet for sale. He is auctioning a miracle. So what happens to somebody who does not have a, 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 the highest amount of sacrifice? That means they will not be blessed. These are prophets for sale. Are you following what I'm saying? Let's go. Uh -huh. And Balaam said unto Balak. And Balaam said unto Balak. Let's go. Stand by thy bent offering. Uh -huh. And I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. Right. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. So whatever that the Lord is, is going to show me, I will tell you. So because of the sacrifices that have been put on the altar, now Balaam is expecting God to speak because a sacrifice has been placed. This is an auction. How do you expect God to speak because money has been put on the altar? So God can only respond to your dirty money that you are placing on the altar. So God's eh, 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 response to people's prayers is money being put on the altar. Where is that in the scripture? How does that apply in the scripture? John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You do not give because you have. You do not give because you have to. You do not give because you must give. But you give because you love. Anytime you have to give anything to anybody, anywhere, in church or anywhere, you give because you love. You do not give because the pastor said you must give. Pastors out there, prophets out there, stop using the Bible to hold God's people hostage so that they can put money in your, in your bank accounts. You are not men of God, but you are prophets for sale. Let's go. And God met Balaam, uh -huh. and he said unto him, Yes. I have prepared seven altars. Now God finally spoke to Balaam. Uh -huh, let's go. I have prepared seven altars, mm -hmm. and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. Mm -hmm. And the Lord put a word mm -hmm. in Balaam's mouth. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth. And it say, uh -huh, let's go. Return unto Balak. Return unto Balak. And thus thou shalt speak. Mm. And he returned unto him. Okay. And lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice. And he stood by his burnt sacrifice and did what? He and all the princes of Moab. And then what happened next? And he took up 
his parable. He took up his parable and said what? And said, mm -hmm. Balak, the king of Moab, uh -huh. hath brought me from Aram. Right. Out of the mountains of the east. Out of the mountains of the east. Let's go. Saying, come curse me, Jacob, uh -huh. and come defy Israel. Ah. How shall I curse whom God Come not curse me, Jacob, and come curse me, Israel. That is an error. It will never happen. Give me verse number 23. Verse 23. Uh -huh. Surely there is no enchantment. Surely there is no enchantment against who? Against Jacob. Ah. Neither so is... Balaam, where are you going? Because the Bible says there is no enchantment against who? Jacob. Uh -huh. Continue. Neither is there any divination against Neither Israel. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Let's go. I'm putting my name there. There is no divination against Israel. Against me also. <laughs> According to this time. According to this time. Let's go. It shall be said of Jacob. It shall be said of Jacob. And of Israel. And of Israel. What hath God wrought? What is it that God has written down on the floor? Uh-huh. Behold, mm. the people shall rise up as a great lion. Uh-huh. And lift up himself as, as a you are lion. trying to curse them, God is saying, as you are trying to scam them using the scriptures. As you are trying to scam them using the Bible, I shall raise for myself a young man with a big head and a big nose. He's going to come and open their eyes so that they can see that you are trying to steal from them. You are trying to scam them and is going to warn the people. He's going to expose them and is going to bring the truth to them. Continue. He shall not lie down. Until he shall not lie down until what? Until he eat of the prey. Okay. And drink the blood of the slain. Mm -hmm. And Balak said unto Balaam. Let's go. Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. Ah, uh, somebody even had a question about tithe. And said, so what happens when it comes to tithing and everything? So if you don't have a job and you are not a tither, what does that make you? Does that make you a thief? Does that make you a robber? Huh? The hypocrisy of our Christians in our time is astonishing. You see a Christian child, a Christian woman, a Christian man carrying an envelope with tithe inside. Passing a woman carrying a baby who is hungry and crying because of hunger and you will Hold on to the tithe simply because the pastor said, according to Malachi chapter 3, those who do not tithe have robbed God. I remember very well that the God was not talking to the children of Israel when he was saying you have robbed God. God was talking to the Levites. God was talking to those who were given the authority to receive tithe. God did not say the children of Israel must take tithe to himself. He said tithe must be taken from the Levites and it, mu uh, 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 it must be taken from the children of Israel to the Levites and from the Levites to the storehouse of God. So who takes tithe to the storehouse? Is it the children of Israel or it is the Levites? So who was God talking to in Malachi chapter 3? Was he talking to the children of Israel or he was talking to the Levites? So the pastors are the thieves and the robbers being addressed in Malachi chapter 3 because they take money from the children of Israel and they use it on themselves. They use it to buy Lamborghinis. They use it to buy big houses and they leave the storehouse of God empty. So God is not addressing the, 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 the church members. Some, I know somebody is going to be offended by, by, by what I, I, I've just said. God is not addressing you as a church member. You are not the robber. You are not the robber. Read the scriptures very well from Malachi chapter 1. Read, go with it very well. You realize that God was not addressing the children of Israel. For the children of Israel had no access to the holy place. They had no access to the holy of holies. Who had access to the holy of holies? Not the children of Israel. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was not the children of Israel. So God is not addressing the children of Israel. The tithe is supposed to be placed in the storehouse of God so that there may be food where in the storehouse. Are you there? But the Levites were collecting the tithe and they were eating everything and not putting anything in the storehouse. And God was complaining because they were not taking... The Bible said, collect a tenth from the Israelites and then take a tenth of what the Israelites has given to you and put it in the storehouse. 
So in other words, take a tithe of tithe and put in the storehouse. God was not complaining because of tithe. He was complaining because of tithe of tithe. 10% of 10%. That is what God was complaining about. I know a lot of pastors who are watching right now, they are boiling with anger and say, no, now he's preaching heresy. He's preaching. If you think I'm preaching, go to your broadcast, go to your platform and go and preach the gospel then. If you're offended by what I'm saying, this is the ultimate truth. Tithe. Go on YouTube. You'll find a teaching that I did about tithe. Demystifying tithe. You'll find it on YouTube. Even on Facebook, you'll find it also. A lot of pastors, prophets who are watching right now, they are very, very much offended. No, how can you talk about tithe like that? Because tithe, no, nah, no. Nah. How are we supposed to, to pay bills without tithe? If you want money for bills, tell the church, church, we are paying bills. In fact, if you want money for bills and you are selling oil, take your oil, anoint yourself, because you tell people that your oil is an oil of prosperity. So if you want money, don't collect tithe. Take your oil, anoint yourself, let your oil give you prosperity first. Thieves, jackals, charlatans, robbers, prophets for sale. No shame. Let's go, Apostle Vic. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. And Balak said unto Balaam, Right. Neither curse them at all, nor bless them Balak at all. Balak said unto Balaam, Neither do what? Curse them at all, uh -huh. nor bless them at all. Mm -hmm. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Balaam answered and said unto Balaam and said what? Told not I thee, mm. saying all that the Lord speaketh. Before you I continue, do. I know there are people who are still breathing heavily because of tithe. You pastor who's watching right now, you've been collecting tithe since day one. Where have you taken your tithe to? So since you are the pastor, where do you tithe to? And you say, no, I give it to my spiritual father. Who does your spiritual father tithe to? So you realize that the equation of this tithe is not complete. It is not complete. <laughs> because that means everybody must receive 10%. So at the end of the day, who acts as God to receive the ultimate tithe? After everybody has taken their 10%, 10%. So who acts as God to receive the ultimate tithe at the end of the day? Why is it that non-tithers are more blessed than Christians who tithe every week? Why is it that non-tithers are more blessed than Christians? Huh? Drunkards are driving nicely, they are living good, but you, a child of God, you cry with your tithe every Sunday on the altar. Listen, these are some of the practices. You are still holding on to the Old Testament. You are still holding on to the Old Covenant. We are no longer living by law. We are now living by grace. So under the grace, grace is the unmerited favor. Favor simply means that you are undeserving. Huh? So you are not blessed because you are a tither. You are blessed because you don't deserve the blessing. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Huh? Stop catching feelings. Let's just flow together. You are not blessed because you are a giver. You are not blessed because uh, 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 you, you are the highest bidder in your church. No. You are blessed because you don't deserve the blessing. And God blesses those who don't deserve according to the grace of God. He gives according to his own grace, not according to your actions or your works. The day that you think God is blessing you because of your works, you are missing the mark. <laughs> oh my God. Am I talking to somebody right there? Let's go, Apostle Vic. Let's verse, go. Verse 26. Uh -huh. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak. Told not I thee, saying, uh -huh. All that the Lord speaketh. That all that the Lord speaketh is what? That I must do. Uh -huh. And Balak said unto Balaam. Let's go. Come, I pray thee, mm. I will bring thee unto another place. I'll bring thee unto another place. Peradventure, it will please God. Oh, you are right. Let's go. That thou mayest kiss me them from thence. Uh -huh. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor. Right. That looked Okay, so, 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 so in, in, as we are looking at this matter, you realize that, uh, let me just begin to break it down bit by bit. Balaam is invited. Are you there? Balaam is invited. Come and kiss the children of Israel. And Balaam comes. <laughs> they are now building altars. They are using the scriptures 
to twist the things of God using scripture. Using verses to curse the children of God. So the issue of use of verses did not start in those days. It didn't start today. It started back then. So what is it that is in it for me as a prophet before I can accept your proposal? This is what happens. What is it that you are putting, it, uh, that you are putting in for me before I can embark on the journey of cursing the children of Israel? The Bible says they built altars. They did everything that they did. At the end of the day, God spoke. At the end of the day, God spoke. And after God spoke, his ultimate word. Give me uh, chapter 24. Read from verse number 1. Verse 1. Uh-huh. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord. Meaning to say it was displeasing to the Lord to curse Israel. Because money has been put on the altar. Let's go. He went not mm. as at other times. He went not as other times. Let's go. To seek for enchantment. Uh -huh. But he set his face toward the wilderness. Now he set his face towards the what? The wilderness. Uh, continue. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, uh -huh. and he saw Israel abiding in his tents, uh -huh. according to their tribes, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God came upon him. Uh -huh. And he took up his parable, uh -huh. and said, mm. Balaam the son of Beor uh -huh. hath said, mm. and the man whose eyes are open hath said, Come on. He hath said, which heard the words of God. Mm which saw the vision of the Almighty, mm. falling into a trance, uh -huh. but having his eyes open. Falling into a trance, but having his eyes, what? Open. Opened. Now, now look at this. We are living in a time where, I, 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 I love to practicalize everything that I preach about. I, I, I just don't want to preach about it and leave it hanging. I always a, a, a love a, to, to, to make it practical so that it can be understandable to everybody. So, who are these prophets for sale? This is the question that everybody has right now. Who are these prophets for sale? Any prophet you have to meet one-on-one -on -one and you pay him is a prophet for sale. Any prophet you cannot meet without a seed is a prophet for sale. He's not from God. Any prophet that you have to talk to and then for, for you to talk to him on the phone and then uh, you have to pay a certain amount is a prophet for sale. He is not from God. So there are certain prophets that need to come to a that need to make a decision whether they want to continue scamming people or they want to uh, uh, repent because in this season if you don't repent you will perish in this season if you don't repent you will be exposed if you don't repent then the truth will come out already like how the truth has come out for this uh, pastor who's right here next to us here in Joburg wherever he is right now he's panicking He's panicking, he's trying to cover up, he has stopped prophesying online. Because the prophecies are lies. Now all his tricks of getting information, because he's a prophet for sale. All his tricks of getting people's information have been exposed. Everything has been exposed. And his cronies are coming, trying to act cool online, trying to act as if everything is normal. It's not normal. Prophets for sale. You are not in it for souls, but you are in it for money. You are in it for money. These are prophets for sale. These are Balaamites. The Balaam kind of prophets who prophesy for money, but they don't prophesy to win souls to Christ. Why would you ask a person to offer you his house and offer you a, a gold and silver so that you may execute an assignment which is a spiritual assignment. Why can't you just execute a spiritual assignment without money being placed on the altar? God will embarrass you at the end of the day. Like what God is going to do right now. God is going to embarrass a lot of prophets in our time. God is going to embarrass a lot of jackals. Remember we said they are not prophets. God is going to embarrass a lot of them in our time. Because their reign of terror has come to an end. Their reign is over. It is time for the Lord. 
It is time for the word of God. It is time for the gospel. It is time for the children of God to be liberated. So tonight, as I'm embarking on this mission, and as I'm talking, uh, 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 bringing to you this message, I want to start off by saying, if you are in a church where you have to pay to meet your pastor, leave. Your prophet is for sale. Your pastor is for sale. They lie to you and they tell you that, no, you cannot meet the man of God empty-handed. Listen, that's an Old Testament practice. Tell me how many people paid money to meet Jesus. Don't tell me about the woman who came with an expensive oil. It only happened once. But for you to meet your prophet, you have to meet him with a seed. Every day, you have to, every day, every day, every day, is he God? Who is he? Charlatan. Leave before it is too late. Leave before it is too late. Leave before it is too late. The Bible makes it very clear. There was a man by the name of Simon the sorcerer. He approached the apostles because he saw what the apostles were doing. Prophet for sale. Everything about the prophets for sale, they think it is acquired by money. That is why right now, whatever that I'm talking about, everything that I'm saying, they think somebody paid me to do it. Because they think everything is about money. Yet they don't know that at times, in our world, it is different. I'm telling you. I want to talk to somebody who's watching me tonight and let you know that the time of oppression has come to an end. Before we go to win souls who are in the world, we need to win you first because you are blinded and you are in bondage of your church as you are watching me now. Yeah. You think you are in a church, but you don't know you are in a cult. You are being led by a prophet for sale. Everything about your prophet is always money. The only thing that brings you together is money. The only time you talk is when you have to give money. Profit for sale. And these are the people who have messed up the body of Christ. These are the things that have messed up the body of Christ. Profits for sale. Everything is for sale. From the clothes, the clothes are auctioned in church. Oh, today we are auctioning the suit of the prophet. If you wear this suit, you flow in the... Tell me how many people are flowing right now with the anointing. There is a liar that came from the States. I think his name is George Bloomer or something. He's a liar. He's a liar. He came from the United States and he went to the Jobek church. And when he went to the Jobek church, he was preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. The same message he was preaching in Jobek was the same message he preached in Jamaica. In a certain church in Jamaica. The same things that he spoke when he was in the Jobek church. He said, I, I was wearing my shoes and then I wore the shoes of the man of God. And then he started prophesying, George Bloomer, are you a prophet? Ah, no shame. This is just for money. I want to question every person who's been associated with charlatans. I want to question them tonight. How do you associate yourself with prophets for sale and you claim that you are authentic? We need to talk. It's been a long time since things have been questioned. Things have been allowed to flow for a very long time without being questioned. Are you hearing this? For a long time, things have been allowed to flow and nobody is questioning them. Tonight, we, wa we, are, we, we want to question everything. There's a pastor from Nigeria, Pastor Matthew Ashmolo. Pa pastor Matthew Ashmolo went to Johannesburg, to the resurrection pastor. He went there to that church. And he endorsed him on the altar. But I know that the pastor is fake. And he spoke and he said, God spoke to him. And God said to him that the pastor from Johannesburg, the resurrection pastor, is a true man of God. If we do not question some of these things, no one is going to question them. I begin to question the authenticity, uh, the authenticity of Pastor Matthew Ashmolo. How do you endorse a charlatan and claim that you are called by God? 
I know that it's, it, it, this is not about the gospel, but this is about money. Because the envelope was too nice, the man was busy doing damage control, inviting uh, American preachers, inviting preachers from the States. They even went to a point of lying that Tyler Perry was even, uh, uh, Tyler Perry is a fan of the message, do, do, is a fan of the man of God, uh, sorry, this charlatan from Jobek. Do you know Tyler Perry? Oh no, Tyler Perry, they even spoke on the old act. Even Tyler Perry uh, from the United States is actually saying, you cannot fool us. We are Africans, but you cannot come all the way from the States to come and fool Africans here. I'm telling you. A lot of people have been, uh, 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 have been, uh, 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 you know. Tonight we need to question. We have to question the authenticity. I'm talking, I'm talking about Pastor Matthew Ashmolo. He's a man that uh, 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 probably some people respect. Definitely not me. How do you stand on that altar and you begin to say, uh, he is a true man of God. Uh, even God spoke to me and God said that uh, 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 this one is a true man of God. He is called by God. He is really from Jehovah. God called him and then he began to prophesy. Oh, the Lord is going to lift you up. Lift you to where? How does God lift charlatans? How does God lift jackals? This is not a man of God. This is a false prophet. This is a false teacher. So we have to conclude and say, Pastor Matthew Ashmolo is not a man of God, but he's a false teacher. Because if you endorse birds of the same feather, flock together. So everybody who has stood on that altar, to proclaim and say, uh, we have come to say this is a man of God. Uh, uh, uh. Listen, the, 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 the association of, of, of these uh, evil churches is very broad. It, it is an association that has got uh, men of God who have been in the ministry for a long time. And because their authenticity and rather their, their influence was dying and fading away. And then these charlatans rose up and they began to prophesy and they collected all the people. Now because those ones who went ahead, they were losing members. Now they want to associate even with these charlatans who are prophesying in the name of Jesus, yet they are not called by God. How do you associate with a charlatan and you still expect people to respect you? That, that, that's my question that I have. That is the question I have. That's the question that I have. Huh? Are you, are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? Another bishop also came from the States. Uh, the one who sings. What's his name? Huh? Uh, bishop Paul Martin. Bishop Paul Martin was also there. And he's the one who said, uh, even Tyler Perry knows about you and put Tyler Perry watches your videos all the time. I mean, Tyler, let's say he watches. Tyler Perry is a movie guy. So I'm sure when Taylor Perry is watching, he's, he's, he's enjoying the movie. <laughs> Taylor Perry is a movie guy. So when he's watching, he's, you know, he's, when he's watching all those theatrics, you know. Elliot, right. Pamela, why? He's watching a movie. So he's not watching because uh, he's being blessed. He's, he's actually thinking of uh, 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 how can I also come up with a, with a skit like this. These are skits. These are, these are <laughs> oh, Jesus. All these bishops, they came all the way from the state. He came there, he stood on the altar. Now, oh Jesus. How do you say you are a pastor and you are a true teacher of the word of God? So, the, so we cannot just talk about false prophets and leave the false teachers out. Because right now, because the false prophets are in trouble, it is the false teachers who are coming to endorse the false prophets. That's the truth. Because the false teachers, are, the false prophets are, in, are, are now in trouble. False teachers are coming to endorse their own brothers. They know each other from their kingdom, which is the kingdom of the devil. They don't serve God, these people. Another one came again, I think his name is what? He's also a, a worshiper, he's a singer. Marvin Sepp. Marvin Sepp was also there. Let's talk about Marvin Sepp. <laughs> huh? let's talk about Marvin Sepp okay to the, to the American guys I understand that to them is business they are not coming even to preach they are just coming to that, that is why they charge money when they are coming down are you there they are not coming to preach but they are coming to to work they work work they collect their money and they go back but what's, what is it that has happened they have endorsed a charlatan 
These are things we have to talk about. For the longest time, things have been messed up in the body of Christ in such a way that nobody is questioning these things. Birds of the same feather flock together. You cannot tell me that you hang around with thieves and you have never stolen in your life. It's a lie. Unless you are preaching to the thieves to come to Christ. But from the way that we are looking at it, the thieves are the ones with money. And you, the one who's hanging around with the thieves, you want the money from the thieves. So you definitely join the den of thieves. So let us question all these things. Let's question all these things. We cannot just uh, 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 watch uh, uh, things like that and leave them the way they are. So all those who are in the USA, who are in the United States of America, the gospel has been compromised in the USA. The gospel has been compromised even in the United States of America. Because false teachers are coming down to Africa, even to come and be initiated into occults in Africa. There's a prophet uh, uh, from, uh, a false prophet rather, from, uh, 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 from America. I think his name is uh, Brian Khan. He traveled to Africa so many times. What was happening? He was being initiated into occults. And then he goes back to the States and then he begins to tell them, he's a false prophet, he's not from God. He's been initiated into, into the occult, operating by occultic powers, or operating under the occultic spirits. These are things we need to question. When we were kids, we used to believe everything. But as we were growing up and growing up, we started questioning things. Don't just sit down. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk. We, 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 we can't end this live broadcast without talking about this. All those who were sitting in a service, looking at a screen, and they were telling you that these are angels that are appearing in church. Where is your brain? Let's talk about this thing. Where is your brain? Are you hearing what I'm saying? All those who were sitting in the church, these are prophets for sale, pastors for sale. They are not in it for the things of God, but they are in it for money. You were sitting in church. I'm talking about this charlatan from Pretoria. They have, you know, the funny part is that ever since I started exposing these people, all their tricks and everything that they are doing. I've been in the newspapers, headline from since last week. Since last week, I've been in the newspapers, headline, one headline after the other, one headline after the other. Even today, I was in a newspaper again. Another headline again. <laughs> and if you look at the stories, these are fabricated stories, fabricated stories that they're just trying to come up with as a way of trying to divert attention from the real ball, which is the ball of fake miracles and fake prophecies. The truth is that these people are charlatans. And now they are paying the cheap journalists to come out and tarnish and speak against J. Israel in the newspapers, one headline after the other, one headline after the other. Let me give you a warning. All those headlines you are putting out there, don't think that I'm going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Continue. Bring more. Bring more. Bring more. I will not stop. Bring more. The other headline said that a J. Israel a threatens congregant because the congregant didn't want to call them, to call him and his girlfriend a Kim and Kanye. What nonsense is that? What nonsense? Do I even have a girlfriend? When was the last time I had a girlfriend in my life? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? Kim and Kanye for what? Are you hearing what I'm saying? These charlatans are busy. They are busy trying to come up with things. Let, what can we put? What can we write? What can we write? I know the, the journalists, poor, poor journalists. Because they want my, all they want is money. They don't care. But let me tell you, I'm not going to stop. Let's talk. All those people, I'm talking about this charlatan from Pretoria. He's a criminal, that one. He's a criminal. He's going to court. In the next few days, he's going to court. Right? He's going to court. For what? Money laundering. How do you call yourself a prophet and you are being charged for money laundering? What kind of nonsense is that? 
And you still see people say, oh no, hey, Papa, we are standing with Papa. Foolish people. I saw them the other day, they were there at the court, outside the court, they were praying, kneeling down, and, 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 and even the other ones were crying. You can see that these people are sincere. They are sincerely praying for their Papa. But they don't know that their Papa is a thief. They don't know that their Papa is a charlatan. Do you know how many women that uh, 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 he's sleeping with? I'm not talking about stories I don't know. I'm talking about women that have approached me. His own brother, this charlatan from Pretoria, has got a brother who's been exposed. His naked pictures are all over the internet as we speak. The one who was running this Deben branch here. His naked pictures are all over. And you see people saying, oh no, Jay Israel, preach the gospel and leave them alone. I will not leave them alone. I will not. Talking about this and exposing them is part of the gospel. Part of the gospel. Give me a, a first Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Are you there? Yeah. Uh huh. Without controversy, uh -huh. great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, uh, sorry, Second Timothy. Sorry. Second Timothy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of who? Of God. Of God. To do what? And is profitable for doctrine. It is profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For, re for correction. For correction. What we, listen. What we are doing now, we are not condemning. We are correcting. This is correction. All scripture, take it again, take it again, take it again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of who? Of God. Of God. For what? And is profitable for doctrine. And is profitable for doctrine. Uh -huh. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction in for righteousness. For instruction in what? In righteousness. In righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect. That the who? Man of God. May be what? Perfect. Through what? Through Thoroughly finished. Uh -huh. Thoroughly finished with what? Unto all good works. Uh -huh. So this is the work of God. This, this is a criminal. Are, are you hearing me? This is a criminal. He's a charlatan. Criminal. A highly qualified criminal. In faking miracles. You know, it's very funny. I'll tell you something that is very funny. It's very funny because... When I met the Jobek pastor, first time when I met him, when he was trying to act as if he's a holy man of God to me and all that, he used to tell me that, oh, no, you see this guy from Pretoria. No, he's not, uh, you know, he's not in right standing with God. You know, we must help him, you know. Only, but just a few months ago, this uh, Jobek uh, pastor released a video honoring the Pretoria charlatan and saying he's also a father of the gospel. Which gospel? So you are now putting each other in position of fatherhood. Because you're all charlatans. Nonsense. He's also a father of the gospel, uh, uh, even in Africa. Yesterday, you were saying he's not a man of God. Today, you are calling him a father. What nonsense is this? <laughs> ah, Jesus must just come already. I'm telling you, Jesus must just come already. Do you know the kind of women? The kind of women that uh, uh, have approached me rape cases and everything everything they're sending messages on my inbox say so please we are we, we are afraid of speaking out but you are giving us courage to speak out we are afraid of speaking out we are giving us courage to speak out listen you were raped you were sexually abused speak out this is the time for you to speak out come out and speak let these charlatans be sent to prison that is where they belong i pray that when in fact when he's going for this case the case uh, or the court case as he's going for the court case, he's going to be postponed. The court case that he's going for is going to be postponed to a different date. And it's going to be because there's more and more investigations they have to put into the case. And the case will be postponed as he's going to court now. I pray that at the end of the investigation, they arrest this charlatan and send him to prison unless he repents. It is simple. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then you begin to question everybody who, who is associated with these charlatans. How do you associate yourself with such charlatans and you still call yourself a man of God? How does that work? Huh? How does that work? 
we, we thought maybe this is the gospel, but they are now they are now giving each other positions of fatherhood in the body of Christ. <laughs> There are fathers, and then in that fatherhood, they are including N.J. Sitole. Are you, are you out of your mind? How do you put uh, 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 the late uh, uh, revivalist uh, uh, tsunami N.J. Sitole in the same category with this charlatan from Pretoria? Huh? What kind of uh, 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 insult to the body of Christ? Huh? And you also put yourself there and say, yeah, even myself, I'm also uh, a father <laughs> Oh, what nonsense. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you this is the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth that a lot of people are afraid of speaking. It's the truth. And you see their sons. Hmm? Because it's not only them. They also have sons everywhere. They have replicated their nonsense into all their sons. That is why you hear that their sons have raped here, their sons have stolen money here, their sons have done this here, their sons have done this here. You know, they have replicated their nonsense into all their sons. Replicated their fake wood into all their sons. If you look at all their sons, all they do is to flash. Flashing money they don't have, flashing gadgets they don't have, flashing assets that they don't possess, flashing things that don't belong to them. By the way, this is part one of Prophets for Sale. Today's what? Sunday. This is part one of Prophets for Sale. Part two is coming. And we are going deeper and deeper into this uh, issue of uh, Prophets for Sale. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus. Let's preach the word. <laughs> Let us preach the word. Now give me uh, Numbers chapter 25. Let's, see, let's hear the conclusion of the matter for today. Let's hear the conclusion of the matter for today. How the matter is being concluded just for today. Let's hear. Read from verse number 25. Before you read from verse number 25, there's something that I want to say that uh, something has, has gone wrong for, for a very long time and it's so disheartening that the fathers were supposed to be speaking out about these things and rebuking such acts. They are now yoked together with these uh, charlatans. You know, our authentic teachers of the word, we have not touched anything. They have also, you know, um, been swallowed into the system of uh, falsehood. And they are also being initiated into falsehood. I said it the other day that South Africa has got a lot of them who have been initiated into falsehood. A lot of them who have been initiated into falsehood, have been initiated into occults in South Africa, right here in this country. A lot of them have been initiated into occultic powers, into occultic things. They are using occultic powers to do ministry and to do things, and they are here in South Africa. In the next broadcast that I'll be doing, I'm going to be talking about the South African pastors who have been introduced into occults and who are also operating under occultic powers in this country in South Africa. If you are a South African pastor and you are a son of a charlatan, you need to reevaluate. South Africa is known as a country that has got young lions who are on fire for Jesus. Since when, as a young lion, did you start envying the power that you see on TV? How did you forsake the gospel because you are seeing that charlatans are prophesying? You are going there to submit yourself as a son. My friend, run away before it is too late. Before you won't be able to run away. How many people have exposed these charlatans and you still believe that they are true servants of God called by God? How many? How many? A lot. Give me that scripture. Let's go. 25. Uh-huh. Verse 1. Mm-hmm. And Israel abode in Shittim. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit Hodom. And the people began to commit what? Uh -huh, let's go. With the daughters of Moab. Yes. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Mm. And the people did eat. Okay. And bowed down to their gods. Mm. And Israel joined, joined himself. Let's go. Unto Baal Peor. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Mm. And the Lord said unto Moses. Uh -huh. 
Take all the heads of the people. Take all the heads of the people and do what? And hang them up before the Lord. And hang them the up before the Lord. Uh -huh. Against the sun. Uh -huh. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from okay. Israel. Mm. Let's go. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, mm -hmm. Slay ye every one of every one his men mm. that were joined unto Baupio. Now this is going to be the beginning of the next broadcast where I'm going to go deeper into the prophets for sale. Today it was just a, a, a small foundation, just a laying of the ground, you know. Just a small foundation that we have laid. So already we know that uh, in, in South Africa here, all your prophets that you think, uh, that is why you see, even we have South African pastors, you see them on TV here in South Africa. You see them. Some are bishops, some are apostles. Right now as I'm talking to you, there's four Account numbers that, that they display on the screens. Yeah, send a seed of 1,000 rand, and then 1,000 rand is going to activate your, your next level and your next dimension. It's nonsense. Don't fall for those things. Don't fall for those things. I pray for you wherever you are, and I pray for you wherever you're watching from. Do not let occultic powers, occultic spirits, overpower you into thinking that these charlatans are from God into following charlatans thinking that they are sent from heaven. I pray that you may not be deceived in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the power and by the grace of the Most High God that the Lord may touch you and the Lord may convict you to live for the truth and to stand for the truth. I pray that from today you stop defending things that you don't know. I pray that from today you stop being a defender of a papa and start being a defender of the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord, and I give you praise. I give you honor and I bless your name. In the mighty name that is above every other name, which is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Run away from charlatans. Prophets for sale. It's not a church, it's an auction. Before it is too late, leave Run for your life. Run for your life. It is disheartening. It is disheartening. I was talking to somebody who, uh, from Zimbabwe just uh, this, uh, this evening. I was talking to somebody from Zimbabwe and he was telling me that a prophet, there's a prophet here in Zimbabwe who's insulting everybody. He's insulting people who never did anything to, to, anything to them. He's not preaching anything. All he does is to stand on the, he go on social media and start insulting people about their nose and about their head and about everything. I said, who's that? I believe it's time for people to choose what they want to do in life. If you want to be a comedian, be a comedian. If you want to be a an actor, go and be an actor. Stop deceiving people, telling them that you are a prophet. I think it's high time people make up their minds and really, really make up their minds to what they want to do. The guy I was talking to today said to me, ah, I don't understand why this guy is, is doing this to me. He's just insulting me from nowhere. And I'm talking to him, this is a guy that I know. I'm like, ah, Really? And I said, does people really know that uh, this man is not a businessman? Does, because Zimbabweans are too gullible. Someone will come and uh, throw 200 rands, 100 rand, 100 rand, 200 rand, huh? and start acting as if he's sponsoring uh, musicians, yet there is no sponsorship that is being done to musicians. But he's exploiting the talent of musicians, exploiting the the ah uh, Jesus, exploiting the, the the influence of the musicians. Look at all the musicians that uh, this man that I'm talking about has worked with. Where are they today? They are all gone. Where is he? He's the one who's there now. He has overshadowed all of them. But who puts him up there? Is it not the musicians? It is time we begin to question. I saw a video a few days ago. Uh, 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 a video a few days ago. This is a man who, who bought a fake hundred dollar notes online. Listen, in United States, you don't just enter a bank and say, I'm here to withdraw one million dollars. <laughs> Zimbabweans, wake up, man. Wake up. It's time for Zimbabweans to wake up. Wake up, Zimbabweans. 
Who walks into a bank with the kind of a, a show off that this guy has? Don't you think he was going to show you that now I'm in the bank talking to the teller? Don't you think that he was going to show you even the receipts of the... Of the, with the, the <laughs> Don't you think he was going to show you even the receipts of withdrawing the money? Don't you think he was going to show you everything? Zimbabweans must wake up, begin to question him. Chief, what do you do for a living? They asked him one day, what do you do for a living? And he said, I make people uh, foolish. He hmm? said, I, I, my job is to make people foolish. Is to make people stupid. And when I make them stupid, then I make money but he was speaking in Zimbabwean language. It's time you begin to, uh, to question some of these things. Chief, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? What is your job? We have never seen you in any office. We have never seen you uh, driving to work. We have never seen you sitting in an office and signing documents. What do you do for a living? It's clear. This is a, a, a prophet for sale. His business is to take money from people telling them that they are going to prosper, take money from people, promising them blessings. That, that is his business. So all those Zimbabweans who are being intimidated by this guy and being intimidated, some of them, are, I see a lot of Zimbabweans are saying, no, he's rich, he's got money. Hey, there's no money there. <laughs> ah, Zimbabwe. Ah, I wish I was in Zimbabwe. There's no money there. The day you make money, you keep quiet. You'll never want people to know that you've got money. Never. Not even at any point. It will never happen. Not even at any point. It will never happen. People must wake up. These are not prophets. These people are not from God. They are not prophets. They don't serve God. They're serving mammon. They're serving mammon gods. They're serving gods of mammon, gods of money. These are antichrist. These people are satanists. Satanic people. And all those people who are receiving monies from these people, be careful not to be initiated into things that you don't know. Thinking that you are receiving money because uh, you have commented and you have done things. That time you are being initiated. Be careful. Hate me, like me, love me, hate me, or whatever, I don't care. But the truth must be spoken to people. It is time for God's eyes, uh, for God's people's eyes to be opened. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Begin to ask questions. Chief, where do you work? We've never seen you in an office. What business do you do? With the way you love to show off. You, you would have told us the business that you do. What is it that you do for a living? This is a prophetic businessman. This is a prophetic businessman. His business is church, church business. That's his business. So all those who are receiving monies from him and benefiting money and stuff like that, you are busy eating other people's uh, 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 tears. The money that you are enjoying, it is somebody's tears who gave him that money crying and saying, I want God to remember me. I want God to remember me. And you collect the money and you enjoy it. Those are somebody's tears that are being sp splashed everywhere just like that. Somebody cried tears for the money that you are, uh, are putting out there. God bless everybody and may God bless you in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord be with you tonight and the Lord touch you wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You need to start answering, asking questions. You need to start asking questions. If nobody stands up for these things, no, if, if, if nobody does, no one will. That is why I've decided to stand up for these things. In my time, I've decided to stand up for all these things. I've decided to stand up for all these things in my time. Tomorrow morning, you hear somebody coming to say, oh, no, he was talking about me. Really? It's time we ask questions. It is time we ask questions. You know? There are things that we know, things that we have in our phones everywhere, things that we have kept Things that we know, things that we are receiving from people. The truth about these charlatans who are masquerading and flashing everywhere, flashing money they don't have. Flashing money that one million dollars. How do you get one million dollars and you come and put it uh, on a table? That's counterfeit money. 
you, you can buy that money on, uh, 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 online and the money will be delivered at your house. That money is used by a video, by video vixens. That money is used in the movies. That money, that's fake money. <laughs> that is fake money. You see, when falsehood becomes an institution, the truth sounds like rebellion. The truth sounds like hatred. Everybody thinks, oh, Jezra was preaching hatred. I'm not preaching hatred. I'm preaching the truth that nobody wants to preach about. Expose these charlatans. Let the world know them for who they are. They are not pastors. They are in it for money. How do you go and flash a Lamborghini online? One last question as I'm closing. How do you flash a Lamborghini online? Flash a Rolls Royce online and then after you are done, you display a, a, a poster that says if you want to come for one-on-one, -on -one, you are going to pay a two, a $500. One-on-one -on -one was $500. Now it is $250. Were you not flashing Lamborghini yesterday, but today you are asking people for $250 so that they talk to you? <laughs> Zimbabweans don't do it. It's a man. And you go Zimbabwe. In the Abuji, you don't have to pay for it. Ah, it's a good Okay, you flashed a million dollars. We are happy. Ah, you have money. So why then go and say for you to join my WhatsApp group, come and pay $1,000 for what? Why do you still need real dollars? Yet you have got fake dollars. Yet you have got real dollars in your house. Zimbabweans must wake up. Zimbabweans must really, really wake up. You know? It's time for Zimbabweans to wake up. I'm about to close now. I'm about to pray together with you. After I pray together with you, I'm going to lead you into salvation. I've been receiving a lot of uh, messages from people in the States uh, and asking me, there's a pastor here in the United States of America. Is he true or no? He's a false prophet. <laughs> it's a false prophet. There's a prophet here in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, there's a prophet here in, uh, 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 I see somebody say, why did you change your name, Jacob Dube? Let's start there. You are a charlatan, really. <laughs> Who becomes a charlatan because they change their name? I changed my name because I didn't like it. <laughs> Simple. If I, ever, if I ever refused or denied that my name is Jacob, I'm Jacob. Yeah, Jacob is my name. Dube is my surname. I've never denied that. <laughs> you know, the problem with people is that they think because they don't know something is a secret. Uh -uh. It's not a secret because you don't know. <laughs> I'm about to ask the last question as I'm closing. One last question as I'm closing. Just one last one. If a lot of people have been coming to me asking questions, what do you think about this prophet who's uh, always doing this and saying this and doing this and saying this? And I said, ah, no, I don't want to say anything. What do you think about this and this? I know I don't want to say anything. Up until I spoke to somebody today and they said to me, ah, this guy is, is, is taking it too far now. You know, this is what he said about you and this is what he was saying about you. And they were saying, ah, really? Ah, okay. The truth is the truth. And the truth is painful, by the way. If somebody wants to be a Zim dance or artist, must just be a Zim dance or artist, finish and stop preaching. If somebody wants to be like Maraba and Kafupi, he must just be like Maraba and Kafupi and join them and stop preaching. It's simple, right? It's very simple. If you want to go to the nightclub, go to the nightclub, make it public, go to the nightclub, tell people I'm no longer preaching, just go to the club, finish, and leave people in the club alone. It's simple, right? It's very simple. I see people are manifesting in the comment section. Come and manifest. 
you brainwashed people. Believe everything. Believe lies. You see, when people are used to believing lies, the day they hear the truth, the truth sounds like a fight. <laughs> There's no fight here. We're just speaking the truth. If you want to be a musician, just be a musician and keep quiet. Hmm? If you want to be a celebrity, tell people, I want to be a celebrity. I no longer want to preach. And it's done. Preachers must preach the gospel simple. The day that a preacher comes to you and he starts telling you about his bank account and everything, you must know he's a prophet for sale. He's a false prophet. He's not from God. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your anointing and power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. You are an awesome God and you are a good God. I pray for everybody who's watching tonight. Touch them, Lord. Open their eyes. Open their eyes to see these charlatans. Open their eyes to see lies. Open their eyes to see all these liars who are masquerading as your prophets, yet you never send them. I pray that you open everybody's eyes to see the prophets for sale. To see the prophets for sale masquerading as true servants of God, yet they are not. I thank you, Lord. And I give you praise. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for somebody who's saying, Man of God, I want to receive Christ as my Lord and personal Savior tonight. I want to pray for you, wherever you are. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Touch me today and change my story. I confess with my mouth that I'm a sinner and I believe in my heart that you are the Lord of Lords and you died for my sins on the cross of Calvary. I pray that today you do something new in my life in the name of Jesus. I know that after today my life will never be the same again. I am born again. I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, may the Lord bless you. You have done well for yourself in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I love you all with the love of God. All those who are sending me these uh, false prophecies that they are giving out there. Cheap, false, fake prophecies saying, I see Jesus all dying. So my friend, keep dreaming. <laughs> yeah, and then the Lord spoke to me and then the Lord said that Jay Israel is going to die if he does not stop what he's doing. You will die, not me. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay, Baba. So yeah, please, all those who think that uh, all these false prophecies that are, are being given about me that I'm going to die, uh, don't listen to lies. Those are liars. How do you listen to a Ghanaian prophet who's saying that Jezreel is going to die? This is a charlatan. It's a charlatan. It's a charlatan. Just looking for, 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 for relevance. Knows that if you say Jezra is going to die, everyone will be saying, Hey, Jezra, did you see the prophecy? Did you see the prophecy? Did you see the prophecy? Ah, guys, come on. Don't listen to these liars. They will come and say, Oh, the Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night. Nonsense. If God spoke to you that I would die, intercede for me in silence. It's simple. Yeah. The wicked run without anyone 